Hey, this is Voxide, and if you want to learn Houdini, you can check out my in-depth courses, link will be in the description. Hey, in this video I want to cover how you can spin or rotate particles or RBDs, and more specifically, I want to talk about the rot attribute and what it can do and how to implement them in your workflow. So I just have three examples set up over here and I'm just going to go over them. You can download the project files if you want, if you check the link in the description. So uh, go ahead and do that if you also want to inspect this hip file. So let's start with the first example, which is just a bunch of uh, rubber uh, test toys spawning from the center and they're flying out. So we have a simple sphere here set to primitive type polygon and we add some point normals to this. So we have some point normals and then we use these point normals to transform them into velocities. So I have a velocity visualizer over here so we can see this and if I go inside the basic tab here we set this from attribute, attribute name will be n and then we just use this point velocity basically to add this curl noise and we can scale this if we want to add a little bit more randomness but uh, I'll leave this as it is. Alright, so then if we plug this inside a pop net and inside here we have a pop source with a constant birth rate of 50 and inside the source we are using use first context uh, geometry. So this will use the geometry to scatter the points. And then here we also have a simple pop drag with an air resistance of 1. So if we preview this animation, this will be very basic. It's just some particles flying outwards and having some drag applied to them. Alright, so let's disable both of these nodes for now. And for our copy two points, we are simply grabbing the test uh, geometry rubber toy. And I'm just scaling this down a little bit. And I'm just plugging this as the geometry into this copy two point and using the particles as the the target points all right so the result will be this animation pretty basic and let's go ahead and let's ignore this attribute randomize for now and if i turn on this attribute vop we can see now that we have this spinning and uh let's go ahead we can see that this is how it's set up well let's go ahead and just recreate this uh actually so let's drop down an attribute vop and i'll rename this to rotate particles and uh, inside here we will sort of reverse engineer the way we plug in our node. So we know that we want a rot attribute. So we will just do a bind export and let's set the name up to rot. So this uh, rot attribute is what is internally recognized by Houdini. So you have to set it up this way. You have to spell it like this ROT and the type for this will be a four floats. So in order to work with four float data, in this case, we will need a quaternion. So we can simply drop down a quaternion and we can just go ahead and plug the result of this inside our rot attribute. Now we can simply see that the quaternion requires an angle, which is a float value and an axis which is simply a vector. So if I were to just set this axis here to let's uh, make this a little bit simpler to understand and I'll just set this to uh, 1 on the y axis so it's going to be 0 1 and 0 which is essentially the up vector so just uh, simply a vector that points up and I increase the angle here we can see now that all of our copies start to rotate along this up vector that we created so this 0 1 and 0 and if I were to set the axis here to 0 0 and 1 now this will start spinning in this direction instead. So if I uh, increase the value here, we can see how these start spinning. So right away we can animate this angle value here. If I just simply plug the time inside the angle and if I play the simulation now, we can see that they slowly start to rotate and I can do a multiply constant here for the time and I can make this spin a little bit faster just so this effect is a little bit more noticeable. So I can play this and we can see now that all of these are spinning on the Z axis so, or rather the Z direction. And uh, let's maybe just set this back to uh, 0, 1 and 0. So this will be the up vector and we can see how these uh, are starting to spin. Uh, so right away we can do something like a little bit more interesting than just using the time. We could of course do all of our uh, usual operations that we do with particles. We can grab the ID value and generate a random value from this. And uh, I will also fit this random value from 0 to 1 to maybe 0 0.5 and 1.5. And I can just multiply this time value with this. And now all of these have a random speed to how fast they rotate. 
one other thing that we could do here is maybe instead of using the time, uh, we could grab the length of our velocity. So I'll compute a length here and I can plug this inside the angle. So now as they start, as these copies start to slow down in time, we also slow down their rotation. So they will spin a little bit in the beginning and then they will kind of slowly uh, slow down uh, as they uh, start to decrease their speed, their velocity. All right, so now uh, the rotation is uh, is, is kind of tied with the actual speed of our particles. So this creates kind of like a uh, natural effect. And maybe I can uh, do a multiply constant here and just slow this down a little bit. So maybe let's multiply this by 0.6. All right, so hopefully you can start to see how useful this rot attribute can be. And I will, I will set the um, angle to be the time again. So I'll plug the time inside this mult const and I'll multiply by three. Okay, so we are left with using the time to rotate. And instead of just setting the axis here, we can create a random vector. So we can randomly spin all of these copies. If I generate from the ID, I can generate a random value here. And the signature I want this to be, uh, I want this to output a 3D vector, all right? So I will use the second uh, option here. So from here, because this gives us a uh, vector that goes uh, 0 to 1 in all directions, we actually need to fit this to go from 0 to 1 to negative 1 on all directions. So this will actually give us a random vector and we can also normalize this. So now I can plug this inside the axis here and now all of these will randomly spin on a random axis. So this uh, gives off a more uh, chaotic and maybe more natural looking uh, effect. So now one of the advantages of using this rot attribute instead of trying to rotate the, the particles with uh, the n attribute, the n and up vectors or the orient attribute is this rot attribute simply adds the rotation on top of what your orientation uh, already is. So if I go up and I scroll maybe to the beginning of our timeline, we can see that the particles are oriented in a certain way here. So I will just disable this for now. We can see that these all have uh, some orientation to them. And basically when you add this, uh, when you add values to this rot attribute, this will just simply add it on top of your orientation. So when I enable this, we can see that the copy's rotation only slightly changed. So this is useful when you want to do an attribute randomize on the n value. So if I want to change all of the copies orientation, so for example, I'm just using a, an attribute randomize here set to n and the distribution is set to inside sphere. So now all of these, if I just disable this rotate particles VOP, uh, all of these uh, copies have a random orientation. So now when we enable our rotate particles, we can see that we keep our previous orientation and we just simply add our rot value on top of it. So this is very, very useful for preserving the original orientation and just uh, adding rotation on top of it. So this is just an example with the particles and pretty much uh, all of the other examples kind of follow the same structure. Uh, let's maybe just go over this other example with RBD. So I have a simple box here which we use a Voronoi fracture and we can do an exploded view. So we just end up with a bunch of pieces here and uh, this is used as the first input in a transform pieces stop. And let's maybe go to the beginning of the timeline. So from this Voronoi, we do an extract centroid to create a point which basically represents each piece. And then inside this attribute wrangle, we just initialize the N and up attribute. So this is basically giving the pieces an initial orient attribute. So this kind of has to be present, especially for RBDs if it's not already there. So maybe I can just rename this to set in it. So it doesn't really matter what the N and up attributes are. It's more important that they are present. So I can just, uh, I have a visualizer for the up 
and our n attribute. So the up attribute is simply a vector that points up and the n attribute in this case is just a vector that points in the z direction here. So I'll just turn off the visualizer. Okay, so after we in initialize them, we can plug this directly inside our rest points and for our template point, so this second stream here that uh, is inside the transform pieces is the one that you want to usually animate or do modifications on. So first I just simply scale these up. So if you check this, it's simply an animation for the uniform scale that goes from one to maybe a value of uh, six. So if I play this animation, I am just simply scaling the points. And if I were to disable these other two nodes and just preview the result in the transform pieces here, we can see we can sort of uh, create this like fake explosion uh, of the RBDs. So this is the power basically of the transform pieces. Uh, so from here we compute a vector from this motion of the points. So now all of these have a vector attribute. And inside this attribute VOP, again, uh, it's pretty much the same thing as we had here in the rotate particles. So maybe I'll just rename this to rot. And if I step inside, uh, there's actually quite a few nodes here. Let's maybe just delete all of these and let's start fresh. You can see that we start with a bind export to rot, which is a four floats. And we have a quaternion here. So let's go ahead and recreate our uh, random axis. So from the PTNUM in this case, because we are not working with particles, from this PTNUM we will do a random, random vector. Let's do a fit and set the destination mean here to negative one. And then let's also normalize this. So this becomes my axis. And if I, I can actually just keyframe this angle here. So if I promote this parameter, I can step outside of this network. And while previewing the, previewing the transform pieces, we can go ahead and animate this. So maybe I can just do a keyframe animation here. I'll hold Alt to add the keyframe for zero. Go to the end and let's maybe just set this angle to maybe five. Uh, shift and left click to open up my animation editor and we can go ahead and alter this this curve a little bit to match our initial uh, curve here for the explosion. All right, so as a result, we have sort of like this organic explosion which is just made of a few nodes and this is without uh, any simulation so this is uh, without the help of any dub networks and imports and stuff like that so with a bit more adjusting and uh, randomizing per point we could actually end up with a really realistic looking explosion okay so this is the second example and the third example we basically have the same setup with the box and the Voronoi fracture which creates the pieces. And then we add an assemble node in order to create packed primitives. So then we can import them into a uh, DOB network. So we can create the explosion directly inside a DOB network. So I can, uh, let's reset the timeline and let's disable both of these nodes. So these two nodes basically just add velocities uh, to the points or rather to the pieces. So I, I have an add node over here, which is just used to preview the velocities per point. So we can see that the, we have the option to delete geometry but keep the points. So if I enable the first one here and let's turn on our uh, velocity visualizer. Okay, we can see that this is the velocity. And uh, inside this, let's maybe rename this to set V. So on this node, I have a simple slider here which controls the magnitude of this velocity vector. And you can step inside to see how I set this up. This is really simple to set up. Let's go up and then there's a second point velocity here, which basically is just used to add a little bit of noise. So inside the basic tab, I'm using keep incoming and inside the curl noise, I'm just turning on this option to add curl noise, just to add a little bit of randomness. So inside this dubnet, let's maybe turn off the visualizer, let's step inside here. We have an RBD packed object, which is using the first context geometry. And the only thing that I turned on here is inherit velocity from point velocity. So what this means is that on the first frame that the simulation runs, it will look at the velocity of the points and apply it for our first the first step of this uh, simulation. And then also here we have a pop drag with an air resistance of one and just a pop drag spin. And the result of the simulation is as I showed you earlier, this uh, result.
So over here to the right, we are also using a transform pieces and I'm uh, using this, the result of this assemble node as the first input here and I am importing the points, the point representation of our DOF simulation. So if I were to disable this attribute valve, so this is uh, where our rot attribute is, so let's maybe rename this and disable it. If I preview the result here, we should have the exact same thing that we had from our dobnet. Only this is recreated by using our dob import that imports the points with all the transform informations for the pieces and recreating everything inside these transform pieces. And basically the way to do this is you just have to plug the points as they are as the template points and as our rest points we take uh, the same input as our DOP import over here, only we use a time shift and freeze it at the first frame of the simulation. So when the points, when the pieces uh, don't move basically. And then inside this attribute VOP for the rot, we have the same thing with the quaternion. And inside this uh, random vec, this is just an HDA that I made for myself. And if I step inside, you can see that it's the same thing here. I just packed all of these three nodes, the random and the fit and the normalize inside this HDA wrapper. So I can just bring this out uh, anytime I need like this. So this basically just gives me a random vector plugged inside the axis for the quaternion and then the angle here is promoted. So if I go up, I just use the dollar sign uh, T expression to move our, uh, to rotate the points over time. And I can just plug this here and turn it on. And now we can see, we can also uh, add some rotation post simulation. So if I make this a little bit more noticeable, I can just multiply this by three. And if I play the simulation now, we can see now that uh, everything starts to spin. And of course, again, we can randomize this. We can animate this angle value over time to match the speed of the pieces a little bit better. So you do have a lot of control by using this rot attribute and you can see that everything is done post simulation. So you don't have to re-simulate anything, which means that this is very fast to iterate on. All right, so this is everything I wanted to cover. I hope this was helpful and maybe it gave you some ideas and I'll see you in the next video.